Hi, my name is Jerry Ann Bogus, and we're here today at the Elm Street Cemetery in Milford, New Hampshire, where we're going to take a look at um, George Blanchard's tombstone and see what we can learn from visiting cemeteries. Join me. Gravestones and markers in cemeteries, they're a great source for information on what was going on in a town at a particular time. Um, who the people were, what they did. There's so much information that you can gain from visiting a great site. And it's kind of fun. It takes you way back and it puts you in that presence of, 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 of looking at our humanness, our mortality, um, why we're here, and who've come before us and what they did. So it's a, a very exciting and fun place to learn history and to discover people that you may not have known of. Um, here we are at George Blanchard's site. He's an African-American, Milford's veterinarian, and a Revolutionary War vet. And you wouldn't know he was African-American just by looking at his grave. So you'd have to do a little bit more digging to find out just what his story is. But we know he's right here in the cemetery alongside his second wife, Elizabeth, his son George Washington, and his name George Washington, you can imagine he was named in honor of the founding father of our country. This is really unusual to find in a cemetery, a plot like this, where you have a whole family. And what that tells us almost immediately, if we look at black history, is that he was an important person in the town. He has a plot. It's not just one grave site, but it's a family. Blanchard was born in Andover um, in the 1700s, and he was born enslaved. Uh, we know after he attains his freedom, he moves to Wilton, New Hampshire, which is the town right next door. He marries uh, Hannah. Um, we don't know her last name. Um, but from public records and the recording of their marriage, we know that he did marry her. Um, but he was also warned out of town. Warning out was a, was a method that was particularly used for African Americans, especially in the New England region, where towns would officially um, send letters to uh, black residents who were trying to take up, you know, to, to stay in their town because they didn't want them to become dependent on the town. That really speaks a lot to our stereotypes of thinking that um, African Americans, blacks were indigent or even before they moved in the town. So we have George Blanchard being warned out of Wilton, but he didn't, he didn't um, leave. He stayed there with his wife. And about six, uh, six weeks after staying in in Wilton, he joined the, the New Hampshire militia and went to Massachusetts to fight in the Revolutionary War. And when he comes back, he um, uses that money that he got from um, being a militia and he buys property in Wilton. Um, we see him doing what a lot of the residents um, who were trying to be good citizens in their town doing right after that. You know, he marries, he buys property, he builds a house, he starts farming, he works, he, um, he becomes a veterinarian, and he traveled um, throughout the state as far down as Massachusetts taking care of um, people's animals. And you can imagine how important his role is in a, in a farming community. Um, you know, taking care of animals. So he, he um, has a house now in Milford um, where he boards out re rooms to other African Americans that may be coming through um, for work. He also hires them. He has a cooperage. He has a barrel making company. And we also see that he bought a property in the heart of downtown Milford um, where he has a blacksmith shop. So here is a man who is not only a citizen of the country by fighting in, in the war, but a citizen of his town, being productive entrepreneur, um, doing 
whatever he could to take care of himself and his family. In order for Americans to, to really live with this notion that um, we had slavery, the history of enslavement, we had to create a reason for that. So we created this notion that blacks were inferior. George Blanchard's records are not written except through the deeds that we can collect and put together his story. Doesn't mean that he was not capable of writing his story or telling it. He was busy being a good citizen, a father, providing for his family, creating a life and a legacy that unfortunately got erased by the time we come around to look at this history and simply stumbling up on a grave that doesn't say, here lies the body of a black man who did all these things in this town. You'd have to know that story to understand the importance of this part of the cemetery here.